Narcissist abuse by proxy. How narcissistic people abuse others by using others to do their dirty work. Flying monkeys, enablers and their smear campaigns. No one throws a bigger tantrum than a narcissist who's losing control of someone else's mind. I'm Elizabeth Shaw and welcome to the channel which is all about the narcissistic personality disorder to give you more understanding of those people you might have been or are dealing with in your life, how to handle those people if you cannot do no contact and most importantly ways to recover from narcissistic abuse. If you do find the information on this video helpful please do hit that subscribe button and also the notification bell. Videos are usually released on a Monday and Wednesday and a Friday. So this video is all about the how the narcissist continues their abuse through other people. When a narcissist feels like they are or they have lost control of someone, even before they've lost control, to keep control over another person, they can enlist flying monkeys, they can triangulate and they can embark on their mass smear campaign against you. If they can, a narcissist will gather an army of enablers to unwittingly help the narcissist's abuse of you. Abuse by proxy is where the narcissist will create situations where abuse is inflicted on another not done directly via the narcissist. They can gather their friends and yours, their family and yours, authorities, neighbours, work colleagues. They can manipulate anyone and get anyone to join in with this. Their new partners, even your children's teachers, to unwittingly help with the narcissist abuse of you. The narcissist will often control these people how they once controlled you through many manipulative tactics. They will idolise just like they do in a relationship. They will twist the story to play the victim. They will intimidate those around them to gather an army of supporters through love, through fear or through hope, often using future faking with those around them to get their new partners, new members of staff in the workplace, to get siblings to help unwittingly with their abuse against you. The narcissist will use coercive control, they will stalk, they will threaten, they will harass, they will provoke, they will even use a simple conversation. They will use any manipulative means possible to keep control over another person's life. Abuse by proxy often starts within the relationship with a narcissist. Whether that narcissist is a friend, boss, parent, partner, whoever they are in your life and they will continue long after the relationship is over. Some examples of abuse by proxy. Isolation. Not only isolating people from friends and family through their smear campaigns and their triangulation of them, um, but also getting their targets to walk on eggshells around the narcissist. So they dare not go out and often end up isolating themselves. A narcissist can cause a mass argument before you're off out to do your usual exercise or meet your usual friends, or they can cause a mass argument when you get back from seeing family members so that you begin to fear going out in the first place from the reactions you're going to get so although they've not directly said you're no longer going out they've set up a situation so that you no longer go out you no longer see the people you want to see and you begin to isolate yourself Financial. Financial abuse is often used by an abuser so their target becomes dependent on the abuser. Then once out, the abuse can continue through the family courts, through not supporting any children, through sabotaging jobs, calling employers. Ex-bosses will smear your name so that no one else will employ you or so that no one goes to you for your work. They'll They'll smear the name of your business. They'll hinder your business any way they can so that they can further their financial abuse over you. Children, they do not 
co-parent, they counter-parent, they don't care for the damage they cause to a child's mind so long as they are getting at you. A narcissist will use their own children to further control and abuse their target and they don't see that they're abusing their children in this also. They just want to get at you. Creating negative situations. They will call bosses. They will smear your name to as many as they can. Take you in and out of the court system. Anything they can to create toxic, negative situations for you to overcome. Triangulation. Through triangulation, they get others to doubt themselves, to doubt each other, to fight against each other, to fight over the narcissist. They gaslight people into doubting themselves and shatter people's self worth. When they triangulate, people often don't even know what's happening, and most of the time, and neither party knows the truth and often goes to the narcissist to just hear the narcissist lies and they continue their triangulation of people. Conversations. When we're happily discussing something, then we either don't agree with their point of view or they feel criticised or we've asked them about something they didn't want us to know about. So to gain control and win, as that's what a narcissist wants, to win and be in control, they'll suddenly switch the conversation onto something else. Usually something we've done wrong in their eyes or something we haven't done for them or they will chip away at our insecurities they will project out loads of word salad to provoke us confuse us hurt and upset us suddenly we're then in defensive mode and the original conversation has completely disappeared then we get blamed for everything for defending ourselves or we are reduced to tears while they sit back almost looking pleased with themselves and watch us cry while still blaming everything on us. Provoking to help with their smear campaigns, they will use people's insecurities, weaknesses and even strengths to push people to their maximum, to push people to their limits and we all have our own limitations. They will push people's buttons, they will provoke until they react. They will often do this so that others don't see how they provoke, yet they will have an audience for your reactions. Some have even been known to film reactions. They'll deny or downplay any of their behaviour and they will exaggerate all yours. And there is a difference between getting evidence and them using stuff against you. When gathering evidence, you haven't provoked them to get a reaction. You are gathering evidence of who they are. When they do this, they have usually provoked you in some way to gain that reaction, which is why it's always best to give no reaction. They are recruiting reinforcement. They will lie and triangulate and they will smear other people in their smear campaigns. They will pity play so that you feel bad for the narcissist and want to help and protect them so that other people feel bad for them and want to help and protect them. Um, and then unwittingly people take on the narcissist's opinions and their point of view of becoming an enabler and helping the narcissist bully and destroy others, believing the narcissist is innocent and the third party is at fault. Enablers are people who will help the narcissist achieve their aim. They will most often unwittingly defend the narcissist, support the narcissist and help the narcissist. An enabler is a person the narcissist recruits to their side. They might not always agree or defend them, yet they put up with their behaviour or stick up for them and even bail them out of toxic situations. People usually unwittingly become enablers to the narcissist and often don't typically have malicious motive. They 
can genuinely think that they are doing the right thing by the narcissist or that they are trying to keep the peace. Some can become enablers out of fear that the narcissist has instilled into them if they don't conform to the narcissist demands. So they have turned into the survival mechanism for, meaning they will go along with what the narcissist says for fear of what could happen to them if they didn't. Others often believe the narcissist lies and think they're helping them out when in reality they are enabling them to do their worst. When we have narcissistic family members who will do anything to protect the family, they'll either believe the narcissist to be innocent or they are narcissistic themselves and running around in a pack in order to protect the family name. Flying monkeys. The term flying monkeys comes from the movie The Wizard of Oz when the witch sent out her fly monkeys to do her dirty work. Fly monkeys are people who act as a third party on behalf of the narcissist to further the abuse of their targets. Flying monkeys can be anyone, the narcissist, parent, child, partner, friends of yours, friends of theirs, co-workers, any family members, any bosses, the narcissist wants others to carry out orders. Flying monkeys will spread gossip. They'll lie. They'll threaten you. They'll stalk you. Often with the narcissist seemingly looking like they have nothing to do with it. The smear campaign. The narcissist uses a smear campaign so that they can keep their toxic behaviours hidden from you, from society, from other people. So... We look like we're jealous or the exes look like they're jealous and either wanting the narcissist back or wanting to seek revenge. They will use the smear campaign to gain that pity play from others. They will use it to make others and to make us look crazy or obsessed with them. They will either play the hero that tried to help us so hard or they will play the victim that was abused by us um now we are often left looking and acting depressed and a former shell a shell of our former selves um so we can match their words which is why they are so believable to those that don't see it or they'll be playing the victim of how we'll no longer allow them to see the children or that we abuse them. They'll exploit others by using their empathy against them. They'll be telling all those who listen everything that they did to us, only they will twist the story and they will be making out to others that we did it to them. So they shift the blame and walk away scot-free from any responsibility. Stalking. Stalking is when the narcissist is trying to intimidate you and restrict your freedom to keep control over you. Stalking can cause emotional and psychological harm within you. You, you usually end up living in some state of fear. Stalking is the willful harassment of another person from repeatedly driving past your home, repeatedly turning up at your home. Um, getting uh, getting friends and family to message you bombarding you with messages or calls themselves uh turning up unexpectedly where you are frequently driving past you um even moving in across the road and sending you messages of what you are dressed in Approaching you, harming pets, stalking children, calling your boss to make false accusations, sending threatening or sexual letters, any letters or messages, emails or gifts. They can guilt trip you with the I'm so ill, I'm sick, I'm um I've got some form of serious illness message to play on your empathy. They can threaten to tell our insecurities to other people to make us feel shame. And they can and they will make up blatant lies to tell friends, family members, work colleagues to get us to conform to their demands. 
So what can you do if this is happening to you? Emotions. We cannot change or control someone else's toxic, harmful, destructive, cruel behaviour towards us or their opinions of us. Their views are not for us. Only we define who we are. We can control how we walk away from these people and how we react. It's hard to start as they will push all your buttons, yet it's worth it for our inner peace of mind and happiness. And you've got to weigh up the situation you're in. If you're getting stalked, you do need to contact the authorities so that they can build up a picture. The authorities can't just take your word for it and go and arrest them and keep them away from you. Unfortunately, as that would be a far better way, um, they can't just take your word for it. And if they did, it would help narcissistic people because they would be doing it all the time. And most do try it, but you need to build up that bigger picture. So back to emotions, they are telling you to either change your perception, change your procedure, change your communication, change your expectations, change your circumstances, change your situation, change your state of mind. Your mind controls your emotions, you control your mind. So When they're coming at you, you've got to recognise them for who they are. You've got to raise your standards of how you want to live your life and lower your expectations of them so that you're not frustrated when they let you down. They're not frustrated when they let children down. You're not feeling hurt when they do a game that they always play. Um, Their behaviour becomes predictable once you know who they are, what they are and what they do. So give no reactions and give no responses. If people come asking you, they just want gossip. Just let them know that that person's in your past. The truth will always out eventually and leave them be. If you've got flying monkeys or enablers, um, if you've got people telling the narcissist information about you that you don't want them to find out, Those who you suspect, tell them all a different piece of information about yourself and see which one the narcissist finds out about. And then you have your Judas and you, as hard as it can be, have to cut them out of your lives also and or no longer feed them any information. Um, Again, if friends start asking and they come out with things like it takes two to tango, they're just naive so either teach them and if they don't want to be informed they are not the people you want to be talking to about your life situations block the narcissist and their friends and their family on everything go no contact with all if you have children set up a new email address so that you can look when you're in the right frame of mind to look so that you can respond if needed or you can just close it down go and do something else calm down and respond when in a better state of mind to do so because they do have a way of um, provoking emotions. Self-care. Self-care is a deliberate act within ourselves to take care of our mental, emotional and physical health first. And we really need to do this when dealing with narcissistic people. So we can be at our personal best to take care of others. To start, you need to stick to the basics, creating new routines and habits for you. Just start with simple and basic things and then keep adding more. You need to actively plan using your conscious thoughts in the beginning until your subconscious has been programmed to do it naturally. Um, Self-care, when you're feeling overwhelmed, you might need to categorise lists and do things in priority order. So think relationships, friends and family, um, your physical health, your emotional health, your work. Be authentic with yourself. Note things that might stand in your way and take action to see what you can do about this. An essential checklist to get yourself started. So um, 
start with a list of things that you don't like, something you don't want to do and behaviours you'll no longer accept from yourself and from others. Things like I'm no longer checking their social media, people who cannot accept me are no longer for me. I need to stop people pleasing. I need to stop putting myself last. I need to start putting myself first. I want to get up at a set time, learn my boundaries around others. And by putting yourself first, I'm I'm not saying become selfish. It's, it's that oxygen mask on the aeroplane. You are instructed to put it on yourself first so that you are at your best to help others, not to save yourself. Narcissistic people put that oxygen mask on themselves first to save themselves. You're doing it to be at your best to help others. Saying no to others can be challenging to start. However, it's a must when you really don't want to do something or don't have the time. Create a list of your own beliefs and standards that you don't need Um things you don't need to do, things you don't want to do and keep adding. Only you can change them for you. A healthy diet starts slow if you've not done it before. Keep a diary of your eating habits to keep you accountable to yourself. Start a simple exercise routine. Listen to motivational videos, meditation, yoga. Um, find things that pick you up on those low moments that help keep you focused. This can help keep your mental and physical health. It can boost your moods um, and it can lower your stress. Try getting enough sleep and I know this can be a difficult one. Um, if you stop up way too late and feel tired in the morning, go to bed five minutes earlier each night until you get to a time that you'd like to go to bed. The same in the morning, if you get away too late and end up rushing, get up five minutes earlier. Try preparing things the evening before so that you can have the extra five minutes in the morning and you're not rushing around. Sleep. Lack of sleep can have negative effects on us. Um, so it's finding what works for you. And if you're a night owl, if you're naturally a night owl and it doesn't affect your life, going to bed late, getting up late, it fits in with your routine. There's nothing wrong with that. If you're naturally an early bird and you can fit your life around that, then that's what you've got to do. You've got to work out on the pattern that suits you. If you're waking up at four o'clock every morning and fighting to get back to sleep, it might be worth getting up and doing something. That might just be your body clock that wants to get up and then learning, training yourself to go to bed earlier so you are getting the hours of sleeping that you need. Spend time around positive people. It rubs off on you. Go to new places when lockdown's over. Um, Meet new people, which can be hard, especially if you've been isolated and currently most of us are being told to social distance. Try getting in touch with old friends and family. There is ways to get in touch with people. There is ways to keep in touch with people. Um, a smile at other people, pay other people compliments. Keep a reflection journal. One, if you still miss the ex, write the negatives about the relationship and look at them when you're having self-doubts, the same as your parents, if you're questioning whether um, you, you should go no contact with your parents, write the negatives down. Um, and then a positive journal. Each day, try to add at least three things that you've achieved in that day so that you can always look at how far you've come. Also put something down that you'd like to accomplish the next day to keep yourself accountable. Get organised, keep notes of appointments and where you're supposed to be when. Try to relax, doing what you'd like to do for you, whether that's sitting watching a movie, whether that's going for a run. Um, try to relax, take moments, um, talk moments through with people who understand. Look for an opportunity to laugh. Laughing really is the best medicine and I know narcissistic abuse is hideous and I know the things they do is hideous but when it brings us crashing down, when it reduces us to tears, when it gets us in that state of mind, it overwhelms us. When we can find the humour and the horrible things that they do and it is difficult to practice this but when you can find the humour, when you can laugh it off, 
it no longer has that negative impact on our emotions. Um, I'll add the video to how to handle your emotions in the description. I'll also add the video that explains more about fight, flight, freeze and fawn. Um, the video for smear campaigns, flying monkeys, triangulation enablers, um, conversations. The, the, the things I've mentioned in the video of how they can cause abuse by peroxy to give you more understanding and more in-depth information on those subjects. Um, I'll also add in the description where you can find me on social media and the online courses that are available. Thank you very much for listening. Bye.